Hi, I'm Dr. Joanna Kelly, a researcher in Dr. Klaus Jurgensen's group at the Cancer Research UK Manchester Institute. Today I'm going to talk to you about my work investigating how we might be able to improve cancer treatments by learning lessons from the tumour microenvironment. But first, let me take you on a little walk. Metaphorically, that is. So we are here and we want to reach our destination up there. Now, this isn't a leisurely walk. We actually want to reach our destination as quickly as possible. At first, it looks like a pretty straightforward journey. We can take a nice straight line and be at our destination in no time. If this was all the information that we had, we'd most likely take that direct route. However, what happens if we're provided with some additional details about the landscape we'll be traveling across? Let's see how our route holds up when we add in three extra details about the landscape. The first detail we have to add to our landscape is that there are some really rather large patches of muddy marshy ground. And as you can see, our current route will take us right through one of these. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't brought my wellies. So I'll adjust our route so that we can stick to firmer ground. Right, so that looks good. It's a little less direct, but it'll get us to our destination a lot quicker than if we'd set off and had to go across all of that mud. Let's see what the next piece of information is. Hmm, now this second detail might make life a little more difficult. We can now see that there's actually a pretty large, fast-flowing river between us and our goal. I'm a strong swimmer, but every instinct is telling me that we do not want to go into that water. This really doesn't look good, and it's starting to feel like our goal might be out of reach. I'm slightly worried about what this third piece of information might be. Though, I guess you can't get much worse than an impassable river. Ah, well this is actually some really good news. The final detail we have about the landscape is that there is a bridge across the river. It looks like we'll be able to make our destination after all. As you can see, it's not a very big bridge and we might easily have missed it if we'd stuck to our original plan. So if we take all this extra information into account, we can make some changes to improve our route. Instead of heading straight towards our destination, if we first head in the opposite direction, and loop back around, we can avoid the mud and we'll meet the river at just the right point to get across it safely using the bridge. And then we can arrive at our destination. It's a much less direct route, but it will allow us to reach our goal. Now, we would have never come up with this route if we didn't have these extra bits of information to tell us what the landscape really looked like. In fact, if we'd set off without them, I highly doubt we'd made it to our destination at all. It's much more likely that we would have ended up stuck in the mud, or worse, up to our necks in icy water. So how does this journey relate to my work in cancer research? Well, in cancer research, we have a clear destination. Our goal is to develop better treatments to treat the disease and to stop people dying from cancer. The most direct route to take to reach our destination would be to study these cancer cells, to look for any specific weaknesses that we can target with drugs to destroy them. And indeed, cancer research has traditionally used cancer cells taken from tumours and grown in the lab to allow us to study cancer cell behaviour and to test potential treatment strategies. This kind of research has produced some fantastic breakthroughs that have greatly improved the lives of cancer patients. This research means that around half of people diagnosed with cancer will now survive their disease, compared to only a quarter of people in the 1970s. However, studying cancer cells in this way has some limitations and frequently treatments that kill cancer cells in the lab don't work as we expect once they're given to patients with cancer. We think this is because looking at cancer cells on their own doesn't actually reflect what is going on inside of a tumour. Cancer cells don't exist in isolation in the body. Tumours represent a complex landscape with a whole host of different cell types and some non-cell based components, collectively known as the extracellular matrix. All of these work together to make a landscape of tumour, or what we call the tumour microenvironment. Some features of the tumour microenvironment present roadblocks for therapies that target cancer cells, like the river on our walk. On the other hand, some features can represent weaknesses that we might be able to exploit to make cancer therapies better, like finding the bridge. And just like with our walk, the more information that we have about the landscape of a tumour, 
the more likely we are to reach our goal of helping people survive cancer. If we don't consider the tumour microenvironment when we're developing cancer treatments, we might find that our efforts are bogged down in the mud or cut off by the river, and we might completely miss that bridge that would have helped us reach our destination. In the Jurgensen lab where I work, we're particularly interested in studying the tumour microenvironment of pancreatic cancer. In pancreatic tumours, cancer cells only make up around a fifth of the tumour, and there's been some really fantastic work done to fill in the details about what makes up the rest. So I'll just talk you through some of the key features. The pancreatic tumour microenvironment contains a lot of cells called fibroblasts. These cells lay down a framework that provides structural support for the cells, helping them stick together to form tissues and organs. In pancreatic tumours, the fibroblasts produce a really dense structural framework, similar to scar tissue, meaning that these tissues are uh, generally much more stiff than healthy tissue would be. Cancer cells have an interesting relationship with fibroblasts, as they send chemical messages to give the fibroblasts new instructions, making them do things that they wouldn't normally do. One really important thing that we've seen recently in the lab is that the communication between cancer cells and fibroblasts isn't just one way. Fibroblasts that have been reprogrammed by cancer cells gain a few new tricks, and one of them is the ability to talk back to the cancer cells to drive changes that can actually push the cancer cells to grow and become more aggressive. Pancreatic tumours also contain a large number of immune cells called macrophages. Now, macrophages patrol the body in search of things that don't belong, like bacteria and viruses, and eat them up to remove them from the body. Macrophages can sometimes eat up cancer cells too. However, in pancreatic cancer, we see that the macrophages can actually stop a set of specialised cells called T-cells from entering the tumour. Now, these T-cells can recognise and kill cancer cells. There are some new cancer treatments called immunotherapies that work by boosting a T-cell's ability to kill cancers. So if the T-cells can't enter the tumour and reach the cancer cells, then it's likely that this type of therapy might be less useful for treating the pancreatic cancer. As a result of these kind of relationships between different cell types, cancer cells that grow in a complete tumour microenvironment will likely have different weaknesses than cancer cells that are grown in isolation. And much like finding out about the mud, the river and the bridge on our journey, we hope that having a better picture of the landscape in pancreatic tumours might help us to avoid some of the hurdles that see promising drugs fail to help patients and set us along the right route to develop new ways to treat pancreatic cancer. We're learning more and more every day about the tumour microenvironment and we're getting a really detailed picture of what tumour landscapes look like. One of the really big questions that we always ask is how do we use this information to help patients? So my work is focused on developing new state-of-the-art techniques that will allow us to study cancer cells alongside all of the other features of the tumour microenvironment and to test new treatments in a way that takes the features of the tumour landscape into account. I'm working on an exciting new experimental model that will essentially let us build a tumour complete with all of the key features of the tumour microenvironment in the lab. This model uses a three-dimensional network of synthetic fibres which act like a scaffold providing a framework for cancer cells to grow in. This environment that I create can be easily adjusted to mimic things that we see in pancreatic tumours, like the increased stiffness I mentioned earlier. Using that scaffold as a base, I can then add the other types of non-cancer cells that are found in pancreatic cancers, so the fibroblasts and macrophages, and watch how the messages between them and the cancer cells change the way the cancer cells behave. A really exciting part of models like this is that we can also use them to explore how cancer cells respond to drug treatments when they're surrounded by the same kind of cells that they would be inside of the tumour, which hopefully means that cancer cells will also respond to therapies the way they would inside of the body. It might be a less direct route than focusing on just the cancer cells, but we believe it's the route that will get us to our goal of developing new treatments to help more people survive cancer. So the next time you're planning a walk, remember that the most direct route isn't always the best and that only when you understand the shape of the whole landscape can you make the best decisions about the way to go. 
Thank you, and if you'd like more information, please visit our online exhibit.